My name's Sean Burns. I'm the Portfolio Manager for Contango Income Generator and also the Switzer Dividend Growth Fund. I'll be out on the stands after this to take any questions that you have that you um, don't feel like you want to uh, ask in the public audience. I'll be there for a while for both funds to answer questions on both. But specifically to um, Contango Income Generator, uh, it's, uh, it pays a 6.5% yield, 50% uh, franking at the moment. Income's paid quarterly. I'm a shareholder. The, every three months, the income comes into your account. So, so what, does the, what does the fund do? It uh, provides, and this is really the, what's its reason for being the real core reason for this f uh, fund existing is to complement and blend with uh, existing portfolio of large, big cap stocks, mainly the banks, Telstra, Woolies, Wares, etc. And what do we do? We target companies outside the top 30, so outside those big holdings, which you probably hold yourself. And we look at companies with lower volatility, balance sheet strength, strong cash flows, target companies with moderately growing incomes and, and earnings and dividends. Uh, these, you know, these are high yielding stocks, but they're also stocks that grow their dividends. And we've sort of, in our fund, we've been running the prototype for five years. So the listed um, investment company has been going for almost three years, and we're getting increases year on year of four or five percent in like for like dividend growth, which I think is pretty healthy. And we're targeting a high um, dividend yield in the market. Uh, since inception, we've been trading about 100 basis points above the um, ASX 300. This is the whole Australian market by market cap. What you have here, this big block of dark blue, is the top 30 stocks by market cap. That is 62% of the market. That is quite unusual in the world context. Australia is very concentrated in the top 30. Uh, you probably hold a lot of these stocks. So what are we talking about here, the four big banks? Telstra, Wes Farmers, Woolies, BHP, Woods, uh, Woodside. You've got big, big companies there, and they're, all, all, they're good companies. They throw off a lot of cash. They're very low growth. What we do is, and here we have the rest of the market, this striped area is about 18% of the market, about 120 stocks, is the X30 high yield area. And here we have the X30 uh, low yield or very risky stock. So we stay away from that area and we target this area where we think sustainable dividends are, but also outside the top 30. So you may hold these. We put a, together a portfolio in this striped area, which complements this existing holding there. This is a little bit of um, portfolio theory 101 here uh, to help explain what um, Contango Income Generator tries to do. Here on this, this concentrated large cap portfolio, this grey circle there is a, um, is, a, is a portfolio which is fairly typical of Australians. You know, they may hold uh, the big four banks, Telstra, Woolies, Wes, etc., etc. What we do, this blue um, slice there, is uh, the portfolio we put together of X30, so outside the top 30 stocks. We put that together to be blended and complement the existing holdings. And what that does, by diversification, it reduces your risk and the returns are complementary. So it puts you further up on the uh, optimised portfolio by reducing your risk and keeping returns the same. What are the features of uh, CIE, as we call it? The, uh, it, it pays, uh, the board has declared a, or has a policy of a 6.5% uh, yield. It pay, has paid that since inception. The income's paid quarterly. It gets put in your bank account every three months. High yield, franking at the moment is 50%. Uh, that's a base. We like to move that up over time as the fund matures. And it com as I've said, it complements existing portfolios which have a, you know, usually overweight and probably have an unhealthy concentration to the banks and Telstra, et cetera. This uh, goes through the portfolio, the current portfolio, and measures it, measures it against the whole market. So you can see where we're overweight and where we're underweight. The underweights uh, are probably um, self-evident uh, where that would be. You know, we don't hold the big four banks, so Westpac, CBA, etc. So underweight there, underweight the big miners. We don't hold any resource stocks. They, they, we find them too volatile for the, to assess dividends going forward. We want steady, sustainable, predictable yield going forward. Up the other end, uh, we want a diversified portfolio. So you can see it's spread across there. The, most, uh, the largest positions in diversified financials, which are diversified. 
I can go into more, more uh, detail with that. So this goes through our top 10 holdings and our top 10 non-holdings. Now, the, the non-holdings there, as you'd expect, since we invest outside the top 30, are the 10 biggest shares in Australia by market cap. So there you go from CBA all the way down to Macquarie Bank, and I suspect that a lot of the people here own a lot of these shares. Um, they're all, all good companies, all throw off a lot of, uh, a lot of cash, um, a lot of them are ex-growth. On this side is, is our top 10 holdings. So um, the point of this is it has to be diversified. They have to be strong companies. We look at balance sheets, we look at cash flows. Sustainability of dividend is very important to us. We've never held a company that has passed its dividend. Those that have reduced their dividend have reduced them very, in a very gentle manner. Um, that's what we want out of these stocks. Now, just to pick out a couple, Adelaide Brighton is, is, has been around for a long time. It's now, it is um, benefiting from the infrastructure. You see all this building around Sydney, a lot of that cement is coming from them. Uh, they've been, uh, been well managed for, for a while. They have a, a, a plant in, in South Australia which is running at 100%. They use any deviations of demand from imports which are low margin, so that's a great business model. It's yielding about um, just under 6% growth stuff at the moment. Uh, so we think that's a, that's a very attractive story for us. Again, we want diversity in our whole portfolio and in the top 10. But below it is Charter Hall. So this is a property group. It's a property fund manager. So it's very good at gathering in funds, uh, a bit like what we do, except in the property space. Managers for big institutional investors, a lot of the big industry funds. And it takes a fee uh, off that for that management. And it's been growing progressively. Uh, low interest rates have been a, a, a good thing for it. It can grow its farm. Its yield is just under, its gross yield is just under 7% at the moment. Again, uh, you know, we want, when we look through these, we like to see strong balance sheets. We like to see sustainability and predictability of cash flow, which can pay the dividends going forward. Again, uh, diversity very important in the in the portfolio context, and you can see on, on the right hand side just how much um, uh, concentration there is, um, which is one of the aspects of the Australian market. I'll go through um, just one of the one of the stories that um, for the for the portfolio. I mean, one, uh, when when you invest in high yield stocks, one of the criticisms is that oh, there's no growth. You don't um, buy uh, growth stocks. The, the stocks you hold do not have growth. Um, well, as I said earlier, you know, uh, our finding so far has been that the dividends have been increasing for five percent year on year. So yeah, that's not um, you know, it's not double digit, but it is above inflation, and that's also. Uh, at a low risk level than um, going out along that risk curve. Car sales is interesting to us because um, it's a company that we would look at and, uh, and usually uh, classify as a growth stock. And it usually wouldn't have a place in the portfolio uh, because its yields is too low. Its price is a growth stock. But, um, but opportunities come up, and we're looking at these all the time, and we, we had a look through, uh, we've been watching car sales for a while, and you can see that it, its share price fell, and share price doesn't fall for um, just on its own, it falls for a reason, and the reason this time was that there'd been, its competitor had been sold from News Corp to another US company, and there's fear that that company would come and attack um, car sales home market. So the assessment had to be made, was that a real risk or not? Um, and also had the share price re overreacted to it, and that was our conclusion. The risk was not really um, evident. Uh, we didn't believe it was a huge risk, um, and also the share price had reacted to it, and that was the opportunity for this fund. So we, we're buying a company that, um, is, that we like. We like its market position that dominates its area, very strong balance sheet, and uh, we initiated a position and basically held it all the way till it recovered up here. It still has a, a position in the portfolio. It was in the top 10 at one stage. Uh, the way we, we uh, operate these companies or move the portfolio around is we like to see companies, what we call, earn their way out of the portfolio. So as the, as the share price rises, the yield falls. If the share price rises more than the dividends going up, the yield falls, we start selling it because it doesn't offer the same risk return as it did to us down here. The yield is lower. So we start slicing pieces out and find new, new um, avenues to invest in. 
new companies. So that's, a, so that's the story with, with car sales. I think, you know, as with all our companies, you know, the things we like is low levels of debt. You know, if these companies fall into problems, debt, low levels of debt give the management a chance to work things out so they're not working for the banks, you know, so you work for shareholders. So that's, uh, that's important. Strong cash flows. Uh, we go through and, and make sure the cash is falling through for shareholders. It's not disappearing somewhere in the, in the cash flow statements. Stable and increasing dividends. Uh, we like predictability in that. This company has a, has a raft of uh, growth opportunities, which, is, uh, which we think is good, you know, and that's, uh, that adds to the, the story. Thanks very much for your time. That's me. Thank you. Well done, Matt.